All right. Good morning, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us, uh, Justice Carpi. Again, uh, very, very interesting times. Uh, thank you, Richard, and uh, good morning to our viewers. Um, Justice, of course, uh, before uh, talking about the big picture, something that we did in a separate show of mine uh, that will hopefully come uh, in the coming weeks. Um, first, pag-usapan natin itong um, gentleman's agreement na sinasabi ni uh, Harry Roque. From a legal standpoint, before we talk about the politics and circumstances, well, is there anything such as the gentleman's agreement? What is? Does it have any kind of a binding nature? Or if it doesn't have a binding nature, what's what's a gentleman's agreement in international affairs? Well, uh, a gentleman's agreement uh, that is not publicly declared, it's not publicly announced, uh, is just binding between the two so-called gentlemen. And it will not bind uh, the successor or the public because uh, the public and the successor didn't know about it. Uh, it's unlike a unilateral declaration where uh, the, the president, if he declares unilaterally that he's giving up the West Philippine Sea to China, that's binding on the state because that's considered a unilateral declaration that's announced publicly. Uh, but in this case, nobody knew about it, and so uh, uh, they could not react. Nobody could uh, uh, do anything about it. So it's only binding between the two of them. Justice, do we have like uh, a precedence for that in the case of the Philippines or something relevant to the territorial disputes, a kind of a gentleman's agreement? I mean, like Malaysia, I don't know, Malaysia, China, or that? Uh, Gulf of Tonkin agreement between Vietnam and and China. That's that's more than a gentleman's agreement, right? Yeah. Well, I I can't uh, think of uh, a similar case at the moment. Uh, we have to remember that uh, Duterte uh, denied his spokes spokesman, uh, attorney Salvador Panelo, denied that there was such an agreement, and uh, Harry Roque seemed to have a back down from his claim. And he, he was saying that, uh, yes, uh, I agree to the uh, statement of Panelo. So it looks like uh, it's being denied uh, uh, by the Duterte camp. And even the person who first brought it up has uh, backed down on his claim. Uh, and uh, Panelo said uh, Harry Roque was lying and was just looking for publicity when he said that. <laughs> so the... The spokesperson who replaced Panelo was, uh, of course, Harry Roque. And uh, Panelo said that Harry Roque was just a publicity seeker and was lying. So uh, we we have to look at that entire uh, uh, entire uh, the context of uh, how this happened. And uh, well, first of all, legally, it's not binding on the Philippines. It's not binding on the successor. And third, it's even being denied now. If you recall. It came out in the Manila Times, uh, uh, Manila Times newspaper that uh, an unnamed embassy official of uh, China uh, told the reporter of Manila Times that there was a gentleman's agreement, and that's how Roque reacted. He confirmed that there was a gentleman's agreement, but Panelo he said he checked with President Duterte, and the President Duterte said no, there is no gentlemen's agreement so that's where we are now well i mean uh, i mean just to be clear this is not the first time we see duterte officials um completely contradicting each other and in this sense i won't rule out the possibility of some rivalry going on between the two <laughs> spokesmen not to mention colleagues i think both of them are at smni the right? ang, ang, ang media na mga bayani ayan kay, kay harry rock <laughs> But setting aside the dynamic of the, let's say, interesting siblings rivalry going on within the DDS camp, um, what would you, I mean, hypothetically, what would have been the circumstances for a potential gentleman's agreement? Because, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to be facetious about it, but there are times you rather trust China over these people. <laughs> like, I mean, like, I mean, considering the credibility of these people, probably they gave something to China and galit na galit ang China. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, legally, it will not bind the successor uh, because uh, it was uh, a secret agreement and not 
disclosed. Nobody could react to it. Uh, and uh, the it was binding as far as uh, both of them would agree to follow it uh, during their term. And, but Duterte now is out of office. And of course, uh, Roque himself was saying that it was only binding between the two, between President Z and Duterte, probably because Duterte said, I love President Z. That's why he made that promise. <laughs> uh, so uh, th that's the situation now. And the... the uh, uh, the Chinese embassy uh, cannot produce any document because there is no document. They are, they said it was just verbal. If you recall, President Duterte also said uh, that he has allowed China to fish, the Chinese fishermen to fish in the exclusive economic zone of the Philippines in the West Philippine Sea. That clearly violated the constitution, which says the marine wealth in the exclusive economic zone of the Philippines is reserved for exclusively for Filipinos. So he violated it. Uh, and uh, I was waiting for Senate to to investigate it because, uh, you know, any any uh, executive agreement, if you call it, or any treaty must be uh, taken up by the Senate. At least they must discuss it. If it constitutes a treaty, it constitutes a derogation of our sovereign rights, but nobody wanted to discuss it. They were all afraid of Duterte, and that's already the Senate. Uh, how much more for the House? So it was a very strange situation where Duterte kept on violating the Constitution when he said uh, the Navy will patrol only the territorial sea. The Constitution says the state shall protect its marine wealth in its exclusive economic zone. So. You know, we were the only ones who were calling Duterte to, to task. No? We were calling him out of bounds. and But the rest of the Congress, uh, they just refused to tackle it. And uh, I don't know why. And uh, and this is the result. Duterte kept on uh, uh, making those statements. And uh, I think we should be very strict when it comes to the Constitution. We should hold every public official accountable if they violate the constitution openly. It was an open violation. Justice, of course, just to be clear, I mean, biglang maraming matapang ngayon sa ating Congress and Senado. Now everyone is fighting for the West Philippine Sea. Yung iba nga, nagti-t-shirt pa ng West Philippine Sea, may designer t-shirt, pumunta sa Gilas, Pilipinas. Of course, uh, we all very much remember how these people were reacting back in the day, in including against us, right? When we were calling out the words of the president. But, I mean, putting aside the the antics and the clown show and everything during the, the era of Duterte. And even after, as we can see right now, sila sila na lang, nag -away -away na sila. It, I mean, I think uh, Senator Rizzo and Diver, some of the few independent-minded people out there in the government, she's, she said that, aren't we talking about a potentially treasonous situation here? I mean, shouldn't we have a thorough, comprehensive investigation uh, which organs of the state should be involved aside from the Senate? Should the executive branch also launch a serious investigation into this? Because, eh, I mean, we can laugh about this, but if this is potentially a treasonous situation, then something more serious should be. The reason I'm, I'm talking about this is because the DFA statement in early March more or less implied that there was such a proposal and it was contrary to our national interest, as they put it explicitly. So DFA is washing off its hands. So it looks like no uh, official organ was involved, but some people may have been involved, regardless of what Salvador Panel or some extremely credible people are saying out there. Yeah, you're right. Uh, the DFA uh, disclosed that uh, there were proposals by China, but they, the DFA rejected it because it would violate the Constitution. It would be against the arbitral award. Uh, but maybe what uh, Senator Rizzo Antivera is doing is the right thing. Because uh, under existing law, treason can be committed only during wartime. And uh, in, uh, and this is really, if Duterte did it during wartime, this is treason. He, he can be executed for treason if we have a penalty for uh, 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 execution for treason. But uh, I think uh, what Riza should do is to... Uh, uh, to conduct the investigation in aid of legislation so that we will have legislation in place uh, during peacetime. Because during wartime, if a person uh, 
uh, commits a treasonous act, that's governed by the revised penal code. But there is no equivalent uh, law during peacetime. The nearest law is uh, when you are disloyal to the Republic. Uh, that's uh, considered uh, a violation of the uh, uh, the code of conduct of government officials. But the penalty there is dismissal from office. <laughs> So it's not the I think the 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 penalties to 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 light and of course if you are in office you can be uh, uh, impeached if it's a culpable violation of the constitution and you are an impeachable officer, but uh, he, he, the president controls Congress so nobody would file exactly what happened during time of the third. So we should have a law saying that if you commit a treasonous act. The same treason uh, act during peacetime, then you will be subject to a penalty also, uh, which will be probably lighter during peacetime if it is committed right. than in wartime. But the I think there is a gap in the law because if it is a crime during peacetime uh, during wartime, it should also be a crime during peacetime because it uh, it injures the national interest. So that should be the. Uh, that should be the direction of the inquiry that's in aid of legislation because uh, you are thinking of a new legislation uh, that will apply during peacetime because there's a, a gap, a hiatus in the law. Yeah, it, it, thank you, Justice, for pointing that out. Um, um, I mean, for, for, why do you think we have such a gap? I mean, isn't it like commonsensical that, you know, treasonous acts could happen in a non-war situation, but in still very, very fragile situations that could, it could you know, lead to war? I mean, the United States had all sorts of different legislations during the Cold War period, whereby you're not on a direct war with the Soviet Union, but, you know, potentially... Uh, disastrous, uh, you know, actions by American officials that could com completely undermine um, their national security. I mean, obviously, if you watch the movie Oppenheimer, you would have criticism because it was used to, you know, to to uh, uh, you know to red tag essentially. You know, um, but but nevertheless, um, in 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 democracies today, in mature democracies today, do we have any kind of a legal blueprint that we can draw on? Yes, the U.S., uh, U.K., and other. Uh, democracies in uh, EU, they all have laws, uh, even during peacetime, because they had this, uh, uh, during the Cold War, a lot of their uh, government officials and uh, uh, and citizens were recruited by the KGB. And uh, so they developed that. Uh, the, they had to uh, to promulgate laws to counter the the communist recruitment, the KGB recruitment, but we did not have that kind of uh, experience. Uh, we just copied the our present revised penal code is copied uh, uh, almost verbatim from the revised penal code of Spain, and uh, it's very old law, and uh, uh, and uh, and that's it. In the in the case of a uh, uh, of uh, of uh, treason, it applied only during wartime. So we have to update. That's why uh, I'm hoping that this uh, le legislative inquiry of uh, uh, Santa Risa will move in that direction, that th there is really a gap. There's a black hole in our legal system. And we, we should, because uh, it's not only Duterte, you have a lot of Filipinos now who are mouthing ch ch Chinese propaganda because they're paid by China. Uh, the uh, we have a law already. We copied it. Uh, it was uh, uh, enacted uh, during the time of uh, Marcos during martial law. It's like all uh, all uh, those who are lobbyists for a foreign country, paid lobbyists must register. But uh, that, that's uh, only for purposes of registration. So you will disclose your yeah. yeah transparency. But we really need something because we may have some military officers who will be uh, recruited by by China during peacetime. That's the problem. Uh, or civilian. If you are a military officer, you will be governed by the uh, military uh, rules. You can be subjected to court martial. But for civilians. There is that uh, very weak provision in the code of conduct for government employees. Yes, it's a violation, but the, this penalty is just dismissal from uh, from government office. Uh, Justice, I mean, doesn't that uh, kind of 
reflect some fundamental weaknesses and sense of complacency in the Philippines. I mean, in in different episodes with you and and other people are uh in the know about the things at West Philippines. We discuss a lot about national defense, AFP, external security. But I'm, I'm but it, I find it's quite surprising that you know we also have all of these serious gaps domestically also in terms of our legislation. I mean, in in medyo masipag naman mga abogado natin. It's not like we were a country shy of making legislations. Um, I I don't want to be too speculative, but I'm half shocked at the fact that all of these decades, you know, we we did not um try to take care of some of these basic things. Um, is it because we were too reliant on the United States around? throughout the Cold War period, and and we are still trying to find our own footing? I mean, what's going on there? Well, uh, yes, uh, I think we we have that gap in the law. Uh, and uh, we have been very cavalier. In fact, uh, you remember President Duterte, he allowed uh, uh, DITO, which is practically financed by China Tel, a Chinese, Chinese state-owned company, to install their towers in all our military camps. Can you just imagine that? Uh, uh, Chinese uh, uh, receivers, transceivers will be installed in our military camps. So they will all collect all the communications of our military. And, uh, you know, to the credit of our military, they, they refuse to implement it. They could not, of course, uh, say no directly to the commander-in-chief, President Duterte, but they just delayed and now they're not implementing it but because they know but of course uh, i was uh, i wrote about it and uh, the the of course uh, the like general esperon who was head of the nsa at the time they all defended duterte but the people on the ground uh, knew that the, the the injury that could be caused so they just refused to implement it while the uh, their superiors who uh, paid lip service to it, but they did not. They all of them really didn't want to implement it, and uh, luckily, uh, not they did not a single tower was installed. Uh, but that's the we, we. I think we need really a all of nation approach on national security. Uh, that uh, we should be conscious right now. Uh, uh, we 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 allowed. Uh, in the draft of the amended public service act that the 30 proposed to congress he wanted the our tele, telecom company can be 100% owned by china by uh, by foreigners and he said i will give the third telco to china china tel can you just imagine that and uh so what happened here was uh, we all worked to stop it to or to to create poison pills the what happened was the uh, intelligence uh, service of the uh, armed forces proposed to congress to put their subject to national security uh, the president can decide uh, not to implement this law allowing foreigners to own 100% of our telecom if it infringes our national security so that's one layer and the, the other the other uh, the telcos, uh, Globe and uh, PLDT, suggested to Congress that yes, uh, foreigners can 100%, but not state-owned enterprises because the Chinese uh, telecom companies are state-owned. So they were able to insert that. And I myself, because I was worried, I worked that I suggested to some congressmen that to put their subject to reciprocity because if we allow China to own 100% of our telecom company, China should also allow us. But in China, foreigners cannot own a majority of a telecom company because they know a telecom company is essential to national security. You cannot allow foreigners to own your telecom company, especially under Chinese law. All Chinese citizens and companies, wherever they are in the world, are obliged to turn over to China to the Chinese uh, security agencies, any data that they that is in their possession. So if they establish a, a telecom tower in a in Camp Aguinaldo, and they get all those uh, uh, communications of our general headquarters, uh, the Chinese who operate the DITO 
will uh, will be forced to turn over the uh, the data to Chinese uh, security agencies. So th there are three layers now that uh, prevent uh, the China tell from gaining uh, majority control of uh, DITO because first, uh, if you're a state-owned company, you cannot uh, uh, own majority of uh, Philippine telecom companies. Second, uh, the, the president, uh, for reasons of national security, can pre prohibit. And third, it must be subject to reciprocity. And China will never open up their telecom industry to foreign uh, ownership, foreign control, because for them, uh, they cannot. The, the essence of the Communist Party, their total control, is uh, uh, control of communications. They, they they cannot allow people to talk freely. That's why they even have a firewall for the internet. They 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 have complete surveillance and uh, they intrude into your privacy. That's the way to control society under a communist regime. So for them, uh, the telecom in com telecom companies are very important, critical for control for controlling society, and they will never allow uh, uh, foreigners to co to control or manage their telecom industries so they will they, that uh, they cannot comply with that condition subject to reciprocity i mean i, I would say uh, just is that even some of their supposed private companies their being private is questionable right i mean considering how in china the government just can come in and take over the company or has essentially you know versions of uh, commissars in the board of governors, I mean, there are so many levers that the Chinese government uh, uses and can use to essentially force Chinese companies, even privately owned companies, uh, to toe the line, right? I mean, I think Huawei, last time I checked, is a private company, but I think no one in any mature democracy would assume that Huawei is not being influenced by the Chinese government one way or another, considering how much subsidies and how much direct legal and political control uh, the Chinese Communist Party has over practically everything in China, right? I mean, so, so in that case, doesn't this mean that we have to be careful with any kind of deal with any major Chinese company as far as our critical infrastructure is concerned, which also raises the issue of national greed, right? Because yes, it's not Very only the correct. ownership, right? It's also the maintenance, the engineering. I mean, I think, uh, again, a number of senators, including Senator Ontiveros, back in the day, uh, Miriam Defensor, and more recently also Rafi Tulfa have raised issues about you know, essentially, Chinese engineers running the show in some of this company. Uh, I mean, in the, in the in the in the in the grid sector, uh, for instance. I mean, so should we do something more drastic here? Essentially, renationalize some of these sectors or come up with very explicit national security papers, uh, uh with respect to China. Well, on the national grid, I think we have to renationalize it. We cannot, you know, the the Chinese are the one running the grid. They are technicians. Uh, there was a time when they they removed all the Filipino technicians, and the the, the ESAP complained. The intelligence service of the armed forces Philippines complained. So I I don't know if they they were brought back, but control over that uh, over the technical matters uh, under the national grid is in the hands of the Chinese, and and they deny that uh, it can be shut down from China. And I but I believe it can be shut down by China because these are all. Uh, done electronically and through uh, in the, the internet uh, we, we we can we can open uh, our if you have a house abroad you can open it from here through the internet you can start your car in new york from here through the internet so you can shut down uh, the grid from uh, from beijing it, it's as simple as that now so we have to be very careful about this because china wants to grab our or maritime zones and island territories in the West Philippine Sea, and uh, and uh, we have to be uh, conscious of that. That uh, how how can we fight China if they can shut down our national grid? That's why the Americans in their ad sites they put up their own generator. They do they will not rely on the national grid. That's how critical it is. Uh, even our all our camps should have their own generator because in case of a conflict in the West Philippine Sea, China will just switch switch off the national grid and all our camps will go dark. 
so again, the last time we check, um, this is from the Arroyo to Aquino era, right? This uh, the the Chinese uh, in, involved. Yes, that happened. The privatization happened during the Arroyo, Arroyo administration. Uh, administration. But you know, national grid is like printing money because uh, the 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 everybody has to pass through the national grid. All the power. If you put up a plant in Quezon, Pabilao, it has to pass through the national grid because the power is delivered in Metro Manila. So it's like a tollway. The transport will not move unless you pass through the tollway. And there will be no electricity in Manila without that uh, national grid. So it's really, and and it will always be profitable. There, there's no way a national grid can lose money because you just add on to the, uh, you just charge. And everybody needs it. Right. I don't know why it was privatized. When uh, it's so critical for national security and there's no way, it was not losing money. Uh, it should not lose money by definition. If it was losing money, then there's a lot of corruption there. I mean, uh, uh, just as I don't want to be self-deprecating too much, but para on the thing, it is para major banana republic. I mean, there's so many safeguards, basic safeguards you would assume in any serious democracy or nation states that it looks like they're they're really missing in the case of the Philippines. And honestly, I mean, Duterte being a lawyer himself, I'm not necessarily the best lawyer, but being the lawyer himself perhaps was aware of a lot of these gaps uh, in the system that he exploited on many fronts, um, particularly also due to the West Philippine Sea issue. Is that also your understanding? Yes, uh, he knew what he was doing, but he did it. That means it was intentional. When he said, do not patrol the EEZ, just patrol up to our territorial sea, he knew the consequences. That means China will grab our EEZ. Nobody will oppose China, but he did it willingly because he wanted to do it as a favor for China. It was against their national interest. That's, you know, that's why I said in wartime that will be treason, but in uh, uh, peacetime that is culpable violation of the constitution. He's an impeachable officer, but you need Congress to impeach him, and everyone in Congress will not do it. Why? Because, you know, you know why all the congressmen are under the thumb of the president because of the pork barrel. The Supreme Court before uh, Congress had the, when they passed the General Appropriations Act, there would be a line there that the congressman can recommend where the uh, public works will be placed in their district. But the Supreme Court ruled that is unconstitutional because uh, Congress can only legislate. It cannot implement. That is an executive function. So now, uh, but Congress, the congressmen still want their pork barrel. So they put the entire amount of the pork barrel in the Department of Public Works. And it's given entirely up to the president to dis distribute it. So you have to now count out to the president to get your, uh, your, uh, your uh, pork barrel because uh, you cannot recommend anymore. And so the president, Duterte said, okay, I will give you your pork barrel, but I'll put here four later release. Remember that four later release. When will it be released? After you have passed the bill allowing uh, uh, foreigners to own telco, because I want the China Tel to be the third telco. I will also release it if you cancel the abs band franchise. So it was used in the hands of a president with that mentality. You, you can you can see what what will happen. But not, in the end of a president, not to mention like, the narco politician list, you know, I mean, he could also put you on the list of narco po politicians, which is even yes. worse, right? So, uh, in the, the you know, the presidency is something that's really, uh, you just have to put a decent man there, somebody who's after the national interest. In the hands of a president like Mark uh, uh, Fidel Ramos or Ninoy Pinoy Aquino, then you can. You know, these are decent people. They they will not do something like that. But the ends, well, in the ends of a Marcos Senior or in the ends of a Duterte, it's terrible because they don't care. They will just if they want to 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 give up or 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 they want to China to come in and control our telecom, they will do it through this pork barrel because they 
control Congress through the pork barrel. And the, 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 if they want to, to punish ABS-CBN or any other uh, broadcast company, they can do it. They will tell the congressmen, do not renew the franchise. Otherwise, you will not get your budget. So everybody lined up to vote against the renewal of the franchise of ABS-CBN. That was the tool that was used. Yeah, so that's where we see the I, I think presidential bandwagon system na sinasabi, no? and it's so easy to bandwagon around the president or, or the president has many whips, right? Uh, to to leverage in order to essentially neutralize uh, checks and balance. I mean, obviously we saw that also most dramatically dun sa issue ng EJK at saka drug war ni Digong. So, unfortunately nagsabay-sabay lahat ng mga buso na yan. Uh, but Justice, before going back again to this issue ng Ayung and Shoal, uh, and the implications of the so-called gentleman's agreement. I, I want to also ask, uh, aren't we concerned that if ever we pass laws on, on treason um, or we update our existing uh, legal frameworks, that will also open it up to serious politicization, right? That every administration will come in and open up treason cases against the previous one. Uh, I mean, you but can... I mean, you can imagine that would have been the case against, I don't know, Aquino administration back in the day or, you know, or intervention by Senator Trillianes on the Scarborough issue, among others. I see already in comment section some of the pro yeah. people here saying, oh, what about this? What about that? I mean, how do we also safeguard against that possibility yeah. of very immature sub- politicians yeah. weaponizing this? It will be subject to abuse by a president like Duterte. Like Duterte, what he did was he canceled the amnesty of Trillianes. And today, the, there's an announcement in the newspaper that the Supreme Court voided, declared it unconstitutional. So there is, you know, it's very important that we elect a decent president uh, because the, the, we have given so much power to the pres- to the to the office of the president because those powers are needed. But in the hands of a of a of a president who has no morals, who who, who doesn't have the interest of the nation in his art, then we, we, we will see these things happen. <laughs> Giving away our exclusive economic zone. For me, that's really, uh, that's that's the height of, a, of a, you know, disregard for the national interest. I mean, I mean, some would say treason, <laughs> but, but then again, we don't even have a serious law. In that yeah, there is no law. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's really a culpable violation of the constitution. And, Congress is supposed to check that, but since they are under the thumb because of the for later release funds, they cannot do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, th- th- that's the that's the dynamics there, and that's why I think uh, we have to do something about it because this will this will really be a big problem for us. Uh, uh, the, the, this will uh, magnify later on into other problems uh, unless we put a check. On this, yeah, and so it's therefore, uh, talaga importante for Senator Rizon Tiveras and others to really in aid of legislation, no, not just for political investigation or anything like that, to do something about it so that we can move forward. Um, the the, the problem though is, hindi ba dapat committee ng national defense or foreign affairs? I mean, foreign affairs is under IME, national defense is under Jingoy. Um, what about? I mean, we also have that dynamic in the Senate, right? Yeah, well, I, I don't know in what committee uh, it will be uh, sent. No, uh, I think that's uh, the call of the uh, the Senate President and the majority. Uh, they they want to give it to another committee, uh, but it, I suppose it will uh, go to the National Defense probably. Yeah, which is uh, I think Jingles or, or it could go it. to the committee yeah. of. Uh, of uh, Senator uh, Padilla, who is uh, chairs the committee on uh, revision of laws. Ayan, okay, of course, our uh, resident constitutional expert, right? Yes, um... uh, <laughs> uh, it, can, it can go to that. Uh, well, imp- it should go properly to the committee on the revision of laws, committee on the revision of laws, and that will be under and constitutional uh, amendments. Yeah, yeah. Ruby, Robin yeah. Padilla. Yeah, Robin Hood Padilla, apparently. Uh, the... Robin Hood, that's the correct. Okay. <laughs> that, that's the, real, that's well, the uh, real name. I mean, otherwise, you still have the options of, I don't know, Committee Ni Bato or Cayetano, di ba? I think Cayetano also chairs the committee. I mean, 
wouldn't we expect Senator Cayetano to be a little bit more vocal about uh, this issue considering he was the foreign affairs secretary during whose time allegedly this kind of gentleman's agreement at least came up if not uh, agreed upon per, uh, per, per Harry Roque. I mean, why would even Harry Roque make up stuff like that? I mean, I don't think it serves his 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 interest unless this is about, you know, pleasing some people on the other side. <laughs> What's going on here? I, I mean, I don't know what what committee chairs, but in the case of the uh, uh, charter change, uh, you know, charter change would fall under the committee of Senator Robin Hood Padilla because it's the revision of it's the committee on constitutional law and revision of laws. Uh, but they made they created the Senate, the the Senate of the President, the Senate President created a subcommittee that it will be handled by Senator Angara, Sani Angara. And that's right. what happened. Maybe they can create a subcommittee. Yeah, yeah. It will be handled by maybe Senator Sani Angara, somebody else. Yeah, maybe I see it attack on Senator Sani. Because my, my worry was like, see, no, it attack not and dito. I mean, um, well, Jay Versito could be one uh, interesting uh, partner for this. I mean, considering he he has been quite vocal about Chinese uh, pro China fake news peddler in the Philippines and disinformation campaign. So, so as because you know we're just looking at the reality of what we have at hand. Can we have? Because uh, when it comes to the issue of Kibuloy, issue of women rights, etc. Okay, na si Riza Ondivero, she has been doing her job. But my you know my question is, what do we do on this very very? Uh, sensitive issues. But uh, Justice, balikan natin itong issue ng Ayong Inchol because I wonder, you know, why would Harry Roque say something like the agreement was to stick to the status quo when everyone knows the status quo was going to be in favor of China? Because BRP share Madra, I think no one has to be an engineering, marine engineering genius to realize we began, I mean, we began again. I mean, it was just a matter of time before this will give up to the elements, uh, given to the elements. Um, so a status quo would mean you're essentially paving the way for China to eventually occupy the area, or at least us losing any lever of direct administrative control on Ayung and Shoal. No, uh, uh, you know, Richard, I was surprised when he said the purpose was to preserve the status quo. What is a status quo? The status quo is we are in control of, uh, of Ayung and Shoal. So, and then... The status quo, we kept on supplying uh, our our outposts there with food, materials, and water. But they changed the status quo by saying uh, you cannot bring in materials, only food and water. So that's not the status quo. The status quo was before we were able to bring materials. So it, it was really, I, I call it lopsided in favor of China. Uh, because everybody... Uh, knows that if you don't retrofit, if you don't repair Sierra Madre, it will just collapse. And that will end our presence. So when Duterte agreed that there will be no repairs, he agreed that to end our presence there. That's the meaning of that. That's very clear. Because uh, the, the you know, there was a time, uh, Richard, when there was really a need to repair uh, Sierra Madre. And, uh, you know, we, we are a transparent government. Uh, you have to propose an item in the GAA uh, right. that a certain amount must go to the repair of Sierra Madre. And they did that. So there was a law passed, the, the General Appropriations Act had an item, repair of Sierra Madre, certain amount. And the Chinese embassy had access, of course, and they saw it. So they knew that we we're going to repair Sierra Madre, and so they, they, they encircled it with their, uh, with their maritime militia to prevent any any materials from entering uh, from going to the Sierra Madre. So th th that started with that. It was uh, that was during uh, that was about ten years ago when that incident happened. When uh, the Chinese found out that uh, we were now going to repair Sierra Madre, uh, and it is it was there in the in the budget. So, you know, we did not even hide it. It could have been hidden in, uh, let's say, intelligence fund or something. But yeah, we were I, so I, I, I was actually wondering, shouldn't that be where the intelligence fund comes in, whereby you don't allow your your rivals yes. or uh, foreign powers to know so your, we, exactly what you're we doing. We were so transparent. And, you know, the, the purpose of this defense attaché, China's defense attaché in, in their embassy in Manila, and they they read all the, all of this uh 
the budget of the military is their number one i the number one document they they really go line by line and they saw there that there is an item to repair Sierra madre the, 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 that was that's how it happened we're so transparent um overly transparent i would say in that yeah yeah Again, I mean, this is an interesting discussion, Justice, because, you know, like, you know, what's in some of our earlier um, um, podcasts and discussions, of course, both of, I mean, you and I, we're always worried about weaponizations of laws to clamp down on basic freedoms. Both of you have been calling for transparency, democracy. But I think we also have to understand that freedoms are not free and there's a national security aspect and you have to balance the two. So I'm very glad that we're having this discussion, Justice Carpio, because I think people are realizing that, you know, as much as we are for political freedom and all, we need to balance that against some serious national security consideration we're having as far as uh, China is concerned. Now, quickly, uh, Justice Carpio, you mentioned, um, you know, responsible presidents like Ramos and Pinoy and not so responsibles like Senor and Digong. So you can guess what's my question right now. So where does the leave where does that leave Junior, I mean, in your estimation? Well, uh, I've said this before that I'm pleasantly surprised that uh, he has turned around uh, in the West Philippine Sea because before he was saying, remember during the campaign, he said, uh, even, and even before the campaign, he said that we are wasting our money. We should not be buying warships and warplanes because talo na tayo eh. I mean, very if you have that mindset... Very difficult, yeah. Yeah, very difficult. But now he has turned around and I'm supportive of that. Uh, I'm very happy now uh, that uh, we have a president who's there to defend the West Philippine Sea, to assert the arbitral award. And uh, of course, there are other issues. Uh, but as far as the West Philippines is concerned, I'm happy with what's uh, with our foreign policy right now. Um, And, and speaking of uh, the direction of our foreign policy right now, um. Justice, don't you think there could be also a problem of overcompensation? Uh, because obviously we're in a catch-up time, right? We're trying to catch up for lahat ng mga kakulangan ng panahon ni Digong, catch up in terms of our defense capability acquisitions. So the counter-argument right now would be maybe Marcos Jr. is overly going into the American camp and perhaps that could be also used by the Americans to push their own agenda in this part of the world. I mean, I know this sounds like, a, you know, the, the usual propaganda from the left or something like that. But I mean, this is the United States. After all, it has its own national interests. Right. And I think as far as the U.S. is concerned, they want maximal access to Philippine bases, whatever, because they want to protect Taiwan. They want to protect, I don't know, their own forward deployment capabilities in this part of the world. How do we also balance against that potential of over swinging? Uh, to the other side, and what is your reading of how Marco Jr. has so far been, uh, you know, uh, you know, conducting his foreign policy accordingly? Well, I, I think the the real purpose, uh, the battle in the West Philippine Sea is whether we can get the gas. Uh, at the end of the day, the EEZ is about natural resources. Can you exploit the natural resources in the EEZ that belongs to you? So at the end of the day, can we get the gas in Reed Bank? So uh, it's very easy for, uh, we, we, we can send a message to China that we don't, if you don't want the this new EDCA basis, additional EDCA basis to proceed, just don't stop us from getting the gas in Reed Bank. If you don't, was, don't want us to go close, to get closer to the, the U.S., don't stop us from getting our what belongs to us. I mean, it, the, I think all that we're doing now is trying to 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 increase our leverage, to build up our leverage and tell China what you're doing is forcing us to go to to get closer to the Americans because we need desperately the gas. It will be terrible for our economy if we have to import LNG. We have a, that's the Malampai supplies forty percent of the energy requirement of the zone. And if we have to import that, can you just imagine? Uh, I'm told by uh, by in industry uh, players that uh, our 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 power rates would go up tremendously. We will be it will be we will, the, all the foreign investors will leave the country because uh, power is a very large component of uh, operating costs, especially if you are in manufacturing. They will all leave, and even our domestic players. They cannot compete. 
if they have the, if their power cost is so high. So uh, we have to send a message that we have to get that gas. If you don't want uh, the Americans to put up additional EDCA sites, yes, we can stop that, but you have to give us our gas. Right, we are just developing a leverage now. And I think we, mm. we still have to develop more leverage. Uh, you know, leverage in terms of, you know, telling the Chinese that, you know, um, we, we have our options also uh, in terms of giving yeah, because, access to yeah, EDCA, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. These EDCA sites uh, will, will, uh, will, uh, will give us also a leverage with respect to the Americans. We will tell the Americans, you have to accompany us when we go to Reed Bank to survey and drill, just like what you did for Malaysia and Indonesia. So then it's a dual purpose. We use this uh, to tell China, if you don't want these at the sites, okay, but give us our gas, don't, don't prevent us. And for the Americans, we're giving you this at the sites, additional at the sites, but provide a joint patrol with us, do a joint patrol with us when we go to Reed Bank, because, we are re really late. It takes about four years to develop Reed Bank, and uh, and uh, we don't have the gas. We have three large gas-fired plants in Luzon. All of them were supplied by with gas from uh, Malampaya, but now only two can be supplied. And at the end of this year, only one can be supplied. That means we will have to import LNG for this uh, for for Which for these gas-fired plants, and yeah. it's very expensive. So it, it the, the, that's the that's the way I look at it. Uh, we have to build up our leverage, and uh, it, it's a dual purpose. And 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 that's where your contention comes in. Uh, yung dahilan na si Marcos Jr. ay nag uh, pivot dun sa issue or recalibration yes. in West Philippines is really because, because he realized China is not going to budge on the real yeah. bank, recto bank issue. Yeah. Can you just imagine if? Uh, we do not get the gas in Red Bank. We have to import LNG. He will become very unpopular because inflation will go up. People now are he's he he has a two digit low, uh, drop in his ratings. It's because of inflation. Prices of goods are so high, and you can just imagine if we have to import all our uh, uh, we if we don't get gas from Alampaya and import all our LNG, inflation will go through the roof. He will become very unpopular. So it's a matter of political survival for his family that we should get the gas in Reed Bank. And the only country that can provide us with a military cover, naval cover, is the U.S. That's what happened in Malaysia. Malaysia uh, got a cover from both the Americans and the Australian warships. Indonesia got a cover from the U.S. Um. I think that's an important thing to mention as we go towards the uh, you know the the final part of our discussion. Isang oras na bilis na naman as as always, and I don't want to keep you too much uh, justice. Um, so your contention is that the reason why Malaysia, Indonesia, and to a certain degree even Vietnam are not having as much problem is because in their own time, a lot of that during Duterte time, they held their ground, right? Whether this is the West Capella, Petronas. A unilateral drill by by Malaysia from 2019 until 2020 2021. Whether this is Indonesian President Jokowi going to North Natuna Sea and drawing the line and saying there will be no compromise, or Vietnam and their thousand years of struggle against China. So, um, so it looks like our reading here is that the reason why China is so bullying us right now is because um they feel they can impose their will on us in ways that. They can they cannot on our neighbors. Okay, with our neighbors, they're eventually accepting a kind of a fragile status quo and investing in those countries. At tanggap nila hindi naman uh, hindi naman pushovers mayan. So maybe they think we are pushovers because of the yes. era. Yeah, that, that, that's correct. Because during the time of Duterte, Duterte was subservient, obsequiously subservient to China. He said, "I love President Jinping. He doesn't want to displease. He barred our our navy from patrolling the EZ." So. China got used to that, and China wants that to be the status quo. That's the status quo that Harry Roque is saying. We don't want that kind of status quo. So uh, now that we are asserting our sovereign rights, uh, China is, of course, uh, reacting. But 
we cannot be the the odd man out here. Everybody gets their gas except us. Why? Because we are stupid. We 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 we, we knelt before China. Uh, Duterte said, "I love President Xi Jinping." How can you say that when President Xi Jinping says you cannot get your gas? That's ours. How can he still love President Xi Jinping? Right. So uh, we have to correct that and. Uh, uh, and uh, President Marcos Jr., his political survival depends on that also. So he has no choice, really. Um, therefore, uh, we, we don't want to give him also too much of a credit, right? Because this is also a question of Marcos looking for its own interest, knowing what, what's 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 in store. Um, just just uh, for the last part here. Um. Would it be enough joint patrols with the United States? I mean, to what degree do you think the Chinese will? I mean, dito sa ayong insyol kasi medyo nakakabala na yung situation. Eh, diba? Naging lethal na almost. Itong, I mean, yeah. people could get killed with the the water pressure they're using. Kung tumama yan, nabangga ka, patay ka, diba? If not directly even yung, yung parang punching power ng sampung Pacquiao yata yan. Eh. Um, yeah. So we are already in this very serious situation here where China is really tightening the news. Is joint patrols uh, going to do it? I mean, shouldn't there be something more drastic, aggressive? I mean, um, I mean, joint, uh, I mean, I don't know, like while the Philippines is doing resupply, should there be American warships just over the horizon or drones? I mean, what are we looking at here um, realistically? Well, uh, we have to prioritize. Uh, I think in joint patrol in Reed Bank, uh, it's... There's no question that it's totally underwater. Even at high, a low tide, you don't see anything. So we should prioritize that. Uh, we have joint patrol. The U.S. has offered to have joint patrol there, and many countries has offered have offered to have joint patrol, and they will because they did that for Malaysia and Indonesia, with whom they don't even have a mutual defense treaty. Now, uh, you can show is special because uh, it's uh, low tide and uh, very near Mischief Reef. And uh, uh, the, you know, it's a matter of pride for ourselves that we should be able to resupply our own. Uh, we, it should be the last resort. We should do everything uh, to do it on our own before we ask the US to, to jointly patrol at the time we deliver the supplies. Uh, I think uh, we're not yet there. Uh, we can, uh, we can still deliver, uh, although we get uh, hit. Uh, but I think priority is to get the gas, and then we can talk, sit down with Americans. I like that statement of uh, the U.S. admiral before the U.S. Congress that yeah, the use John of water Aquilino. cannon. Yeah, John Aquilino. Yes, if uh, if somebody dies, if uh, Coast Guard personnel dies uh, because of a water cannon, then that is we can invoke the treaty. Let's magnify that. Let's. Put that as a as the uh, interpretation of uh, what is an armed attack. We let's uh, use that so that it sends a message to China. You cannot do that because we will invoke already. Because China doesn't want us to invoke the treaty. Because if the U.S. goes there, they really cannot do anything. I mean, uh, they have a how many? They have about four hundred fifty nuclear weapons. The U.S. is uh, five thousand five hundred. They will be buried. They know that they can't. They cannot afford to go to an all-out war. So their strategy is just to intimidate us. And they you think the Americans are all, in, yeah, but, but just yeah. This, of course the counter question. Do you think the Americans are also willing to to push the envelope uh, on this? Yes, issue? the Americans did it for Malaysia, for Indonesia, and the credibility of the U.S. is at stake here. And that's why every time they're here, an official, they repeat that uh, the MDT, Mill Defensory, applies to the West Philippine Sea, including the Coast Guard. So they, they, they're really trying to recover their credibility because they really botch it, botch it in uh, Scarborough Shoal. Yeah, exactly. yeah, they wobbled. Their knees wobbled in Scarborough Shoal. And, and that during was your time also, hit. right? Uh, in Mischief. Yes. They, also yeah, didn't help us. they also didn't help us. Yeah, so... Now they're trying to recover, and we can take advantage of that. But we know that we're not going. We don't want to go to war. We just want to get our natural, our oil and gas. We, we don't want to go to war with China. That's crazy. We want to get our gas, and that's our right. That's our legal right under international law. 
So essentially, the argument here is that China doesn't want war, the Philippines doesn't want war, the U.S. doesn't want war. But the fact of the matter is that if we don't fight our own fight, then U.S. is not going to help us. And if U.S. doesn't help us, then China is not going to respect yes. us. Right. I mean, that's essentially the logic here. Right. Yeah. Yes. That's the bottom line. So the U.S. The US will help us if we if we help ourselves. We cannot tell the U.S., go get the gas for us. No, we have to go there. They will help us. They will protect us. But we have to do our part. And, we, and you know, we have really to increase our, our naval strength, our air force, our military, because for them, they really spend a lot on their military. And if they see their def mutual defense partners refusing to spend anything and relying on them completely, that's terrible. I mean, they will lose, I mean, they, they wouldn't want to help us. Yeah, I mean, especially if someone like, I don't know, Trump comes back to the White House. I'm, I'm in South <laughs> Carolina right now. I'm sure a lot of people here are excited for a Trump 2.0. So, you no, know, I'm, I'm wondering what are we going to do once, once Trump comes back? And so these are some of the conversations I'm going to have with folks here in South Carolina before heading to the blue states <laughs> in the coming days. You, you, but you know, Richard, uh, <laughs> the U.S. has been an isos isolationist before World War One. And it can happen again. Exactly. And they that's have why that we have to. Yeah. I mean, we cannot take for for granted that U.S. will be there all the time. That the Mutual Defense Treaty will all be there all of the time. We have to prepare for the day when the U.S. may get fed up spending their resources on defending areas far beyond their shores. So we we really have to prepare for that day. Just last point, uh, Justice Scorpio. Um, what is what keeps you awake at, at late at night? The Timoha presidential question. Do you fear that there could be? I mean, obviously, your contention, which I agree with, and and even Deng Xiaoping, the wiser Chinese leader, said it. These are intergenerational struggles. But but are you concerned that there could be some stupid mistake, especially you know some 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 uh, smart guys there in China trying to look like a hero. I mean, are you worried about the kind of an accidental clashes and escalation accordingly, as President Marcos also mentioned in a recent interview with Bloomberg? Well, uh, I think the probability of an accidental skirmish of war is very low because everybody knows the consequences. The U.S. doesn't, do, uh, we don't want war. China doesn't want war. It, in fact, the the entire strategy of China, the warfare strategies, they will not fire a single shot. They will just intimidate. So everybody knows uh, that you cannot cross that because uh, everybody loses, and the the most uh, and China will lose more because militarily they will they are far behind the U.S. still. No, so. Uh, I, I don't lose so much uh, sleep over that, but I lose sleep over the possibility that we will miss the chance to get the gas in Reed Bank because of fear, because we allow ourselves to be intimidated, because that has happened in the last six years. That's a very good point of us uh, shooting ourselves in the foot or allowing ourselves to be intimidated because I think a big part of the pro-China vloggers and disinformation campaign in the Philippines is to raise the fear of war, essentially to cower us into submission, which Duterte did many times. And I found it always interesting because there's always this discussion of China as a peaceful country, harmonious, charot, charot, tapos war agad. <laughs> like, this is always yeah. I think, the, 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 the weird part about that kind of uh, they, narrative. Of this they keep repeating the Chinese uh, propaganda, which is a lie, no? that China never invaded a country before. Throughout history, they've been invading. They tried to invade Japan twice, but failed. Yeah. They, they invaded Korea. They took a large chunk of uh, Korea. They invaded uh, Tibet and took over Tibet. They invaded Xinjiang. They they invaded uh, uh, Vietnam, the uh, yeah. Vietnam several times, and yeah. Vietnam for a thousand years fought them on and off. Yeah, I mean Xinjiang and, uh, literally also means in the, the Himalayas. Yeah, I mean in Nepal, I... in in uh, Bhutan, in, and they even invaded Southeast Asia. They invaded Java during the Indonesia, time yeah. of the Majapahit Empire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the Yuan Dynasty. Of course, uh, of course they, the Chinese will they, say they these are the Mongolians. The not us. Sea. Yeah. yeah, they invaded the West Philippine Sea. Mm -hmm. They invaded the Paracels. They invaded the, uh, well, uh, of course, the 
the the Vietnamese fought them for a thousand years on and off. Yeah, I mean, uh, I always say to the people, do you think that China just dropped from the sky? How do you think they became so big? I mean, it started with a few kingdoms in the Yellow River and all, and next thing you know, it's a gigantic continental-sized nation. That didn't come up peacefully. I think people forget the warring states period and the whole, you know, romance of tricking. Um, now, last, pinaka last, uh, Justice Garvey, what gives you hope? Is there is uh, What gives you a sense of confidence, aside from the fact that hindi na si Digong yung presidente, Although one of the things that keep us awake at night is the fear of another Duterte coming back from Malacanang. But yes, that's putting true. that aside like for a moment, um, what gives you a lot of hope or at least a lot of a sense of momentum that we're moving in the right direction? Well, uh, we, we have... Uh, I've always uh, advocated for joint patrols and uh, we enlarge our uh, visiting forces agreement uh, with other countries and it's happening. We're going to have that with uh, Japan, uh, UK and uh, France are also offering. Uh, we have to have a network of allies, not necessarily mutual defense, but allies that will help us in peacetime because mutual defense is really wartime. But in peacetime, you have to show your strength also. Uh, and we're doing that. We're, I think we are in the right direction. And uh, Justice Scorpio, are you also happy about, you know, the direction of in terms of, yes, I mean, there's the disinformation, there's all of that. But my my my, my thing is, I think that's because something good is happening, right? I think they're, they're realizing na namumulatan, namumulatan taong bayan, no? na people are beginning to appreciate and understand how important the stakes are dito sa West Philippine Sea. Yes, uh, I think we we uh, we are raising the awareness, the level of understanding of our people. We just have to keep on talking and explaining. On that note, thank you very much, uh, Justice Carpio, former Justice Carpio Associate Justice Carpio, for joining us. Also, my fellow, of course, columnist at, at the Philippine Daily Inquirer. I hope, Justice, we can have more of you. And then, of course, to plug it in, we also had an even more extensive discussion on, on yes. my show, The View from Manila on One News. So watch out also for that uh, later this month. Thank you so much, Justice Scarpio. Mabuhay ka. And uh, hopefully, hindi kayo masawa sa amin. <laughs> yeah. Anytime, Richard. And thank you for inviting me. And thank you to our viewers. God bless po. Have a good day, sir. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.